Hello everyone. Sorry about how I sound. I have a cold at the moment, which is very frustrating. This is hopefully a fairly quick video on these BT whole home Wi-Fi devices which work with any ISP. Uh, it does mean that one of these will need to be next to your main router. Even if you're using a BT hub, you still need uh, the main one to be plugged into that. You can't use the BT hub as the master of one of these. Uh, so this is called a BT whole home Wi-Fi. Uh, this one in particular is the quad bundle, which uh, funnily enough is just the standard three plus an extra one that gets sent to you as well. And it's manufacturer part code for the quad of 095663, or if you just want the three box on its own, that is 088269 is the model number you'd search for on uh, Google Shopping or wherever you want to buy it. Uh, they're fairly reasonable price and uh, quite good throughput uh, and even better throughput if you are connecting to a device that's wired into the back of one of these which is connected wirelessly to another one. Um, well, I think we were seeing somewhere between about 650 to maybe uh, 850, maybe 900 megabits per second over the backhaul here uh, but plugged in via an Ethernet. If you're on Wi-Fi, on one of the ones which was uh, backhauled via Wi-Fi, you'd see a lot slower but still fairly good uh, for the price. So, very quickly, what's in the box? Let's find out. It's a very battered box. Quite an Apple-like experience when you open the box. Hooray! And a squidgy bit of card on the top to uh, keep things packaged well in there. And there are the whole home discs. There's three of them in here. One, two, and behind this is the third one. On the back of the discs, On the back of the disc you have one Ethernet port which is sometimes a little bit weak if you want to plug in uh, more than one device. If you're using this as a wireless bridge between two rooms you would also need a network switch which is a little bit frustrating. So we have the Ethernet port which you'd plug into your router or if this was a satellite uh, you'd plug it into your games console or whatever else you want to plug it into a network switch or whatever. You have a power button a WPS button and the factory reset hole. It also comes with the card which has the wireless details on it and some status light information on the back. And they're all the same so unlike say the Netgear Orbeez where you have one which is the master router and then you have dedicated satellites these are all the same and whichever one has direct access to the internet becomes the, the master. Moving on to the power adapters. They do say what they are for use with, which is quite useful if you end up, say, moving house or somehow these get detached from uh, the device they came with. At least you can look at this label and see what they are used for. They are 12 volts, 2 amps, standardish kind of connector. And there we go. So let's plug one in and set it up. So these generally don't actually require much setup at all because they're already pre-programmed with, uh, or at least on, on the, the three of the four that come in this kit are already pre-programmed. The fourth one will need adding because the fourth one is uh, of a different set, if that makes sense, and won't have the same passwords. So I'm going to plug this first one into the internet, and plug the power in. C. 
see if I can move that a bit back and get a computer ready for testing the wireless speeds. Okay, so I'm now on the BT Hole Home, bearing in mind that I am immediately next to the access point. Let's see what speeds I get. So 650 megabits per second down, 519 up, we'll run a couple more tests. And that time we got uh, more kind of symmetric there, 600, uh, 648 down, 553 up. Do one more test and then I'll plug in a satellite and we'll go and test and see uh, how that performs as well. So looking at the information I had recorded for the Netgear Orbeez, which were the RBK50s or RBK53s, the throughput on the main or master point is very much similar to the, uh, to the Orbeez. So next thing is I'll go plug this in in a different place and uh, we'll see what we get off of the, f or speed we get off of the first hop. Okay, so here we are on the satellite, so I'm going through, so I've got the main point which is probably about five metres away, then there's two brick walls, so one is single skin, one will probably be a cavity wall, um, and then there is the satellite, and then I am through one uh, plasterboard wall onto the laptop here. I have to say, these things start up so and, and are ready so much quicker than the Orbeez. The Orbeez take forever to sync up. However, the speed that we're getting is quite a bit less than, uh, or the download speed I'd say is quite a bit less than the Orbeez would be on the first hop. We'll run a couple more tests and see what comes back. Slightly quicker on that second test of 256 instead of 216, I think that last one was. Okay, time for the third test. Okay, over time it seems to have got slightly better. It's probably negotiated a better backhaul speed between the, uh, the two points, so... Uh, so that speed is now probably not too far off, might be 20 megabits slower than the Netgear Orbeez were. And the trouble with wireless, it's also not very consistent, so uh, you run another test and it's quite a bit slower. There we go, I am now going to uh, get the third point and plug that in and see how it works across three of these. So I'm now on the third hop, is that what you call it? Or maybe the second hop, so we've got the main router, then the one that I tested on just now, and now I've got another one which I'm connected on, which is about five metres from the middle one, and uh, we'll see what speed we get through that. So definitely lower than on the middle hop. And quite weirdly, the upload is really bad. Do that a couple more times.
Yeah, like most wireless, it seems to be uh, incredibly variable on what results you get. So uh, the upload was pretty atrocious on the first one. It was vaguely bad on the second one, and it seemed to have sorted itself out on that last one. The download's always been consistent at nearly 200 megabits per second. And now the upload has sorted itself out. It seems to be consistently about 155 megabits per second. So there we go. The next thing we'll do is we'll go and look at the web interface of the uh, mesh things and what uh, information they give you and what settings they allow you to change. So the video about the web interface for these devices will be a separate video, which will be linked to in the description. If this video has been helpful to you, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. You don't need to have the video notifications switched on, but the subscriber numbers really do help. And I also hope that the next video that you watch, I don't have a cold and I'll sound better. Thank you very much.